to The Watcher. I'm your cult leader, Tom Pot, and I just watched episode 5, the penultimate episode of Loki. And, well, before I say whether I like it, please give this video a like. Because, of course, look, I'm not going <laughs> to... I do this every week. You get it by now. Please give the video a like. I'm doing this all the week uh, long with all these Loki and Marvel Disney Plus shows. And uh, i got plenty more coming up. So if you can't subscribe, please do. Because, of course, by the end of the weekend, I'll probably have a review up for Black Widow. And a lot more else coming to the channel. And putting that aside... As we always do on these videos, I do a recap and a review. And just to give my general thoughts up top. I've seen people kind of levy a bit of criticism at Loki. Some people, it's just not really clicking with them. And I'm not going to say I don't see why. Because I can kind of see why people would not really, really love this show. I've liked it a lot. I probably like it more than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Honestly, I'm not saying that that means it's a, it's a better show. I'm just thinking that the sensibilities and the kind of format and concepts are more intriguing to me in this than they were in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This episode I liked. Is it a good kind of setup for a finale? Sort of. I do think like there is a lot of criticism that could be put towards this episode that I will get to at the end. That I think is sort of valid. And I think I have to wait until next week's episode to fully decide on whether or not I feel like this show has lived up to its potential, as it were. But, again, I liked it. I, it wasn't the best episode. It wasn't as good as last week's episode. It wasn't as good as uh, the second episode. It was probably somewhere in the middle of that, which, you know, in a five-episode series, isn't saying much. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's just remind ourselves of last week's episode. Loki got pruned, of course, uh, as did Mobius, as we will get to. But in the post credit scene, we see that He's seemingly not dead. He's surrounded by other variants of Loki. And we pick up with that straight away this week. Um, which, man, I was like, oh my god. This really is the multiverse. It's Galactus from the Fox universe. No, it's not. It's an angry smoke monster. But it's not Galactus. That terrible version of Galactus, which I talked about in one of my other videos, actually. I'm not going to plug it here. Yes, I will. We start with... Uh, Old Loki, I guess, Richard E. Grant's version of Loki. It's going to get very confusing talking about all these Lokis, but I'll try as much as I can to differentiate them. Uh, he basically says to him, this is the Void, that's Eliath, uh, and we're his lunch, so we better get moving, basically. Um, we get a bit more detail about what Eliath is. Uh, he's basically a smoke monster, not like Lost, I guess, or maybe it is a bit like Lost. <laughs> And he's, uh, as we find out later, a living tempest that consumes matter and energy. And to put it very succinctly, as Richard E. Grant does, it's a shark tank, and that's the shark. Fair enough. So these Lokis are all kind of surviving. Because, as we find out later, the Void is basically the end of the line. It's it's kind of the last stop at, at the end of the universe sort of thing. Uh, and basically anything that is pruned is sent to this dimension, and then eaten by Eliath. Uh, which is kind of a cool, interesting concept that basically these Lokis have been living at the end of the world, essentially, um, just trying to survive uh, for who knows how long. I mean, time, in, as they mentioned later on, it's really hard to tell how much time has passed and what's going on. I mean, Loki is like, has it been days or weeks or, or months <laughs> since I attacked New York in the Avengers? It's crazy when you think about it that way. But yeah, we are, that's kind of where we pick up in uh, in the void, as it were. Sylvie, uh, as we saw last week, uh, was sort of the, the last woman standing. Her and Ravona uh, at the timekeepers that were kind of slayed uh, last week as we found out they were androids. And uh, she's interrogating her. She's saying, like, I want to know who's at top. Uh, but she, Ravona says, I want to know as well because I've been lied to as well. Now, I did point out last week, she didn't seem that surprised that they were androids. So we still don't really know where her allegiance is like. Well, we know where her allegiance is like, but we don't know... How much she knows and is she lying? She's acting at least like she didn't know this was the case. Um, but she sort of explains what's been going on. She says, like, when a reality is pruned, it's moved to somewhere uh, where it can continue growing. To a void. So this is where all our Lokis have ended up. She says, which is something that we'd heard already, that the timekeepers were unraveling the end of time. She basically says, like, the end of the time uh, is still being written, as it were. And, yeah, that's sort of where we leave off with uh, Ravona and Sylvie for... Uh, a little bit, but we come back to... Actually, you know what? We'll, we'll cut to that part. But basically, Ravona goes to Miss Minutes. And we keep hearing, I think Tara Strong, the voice actor for Miss Minutes, said that there's sort of more to be revealed about her or something sinister. I've seen some people speculate she's the villain. And I'm like, hmm, I kind of hope not. <laughs> That'd be kind of weak. But um, she's 
uh, being asked to open the files on the origin of TVA, the beginning of time, and Sylvie kind of insists the end of time, because that's where they are. Um, and basically, it looks suspicious. It looks like Miss Minutes is kind of stalling for time, but it's... Um, and of course, that Ravone is sort of just leading Sylvie on until uh, Minutemen can show up to help her. Because uh, they're like, you can't use a tempad to get to the void, but we could use, and I think this was suggested on Miss Minutes, we could use a void spacecraft, which can withstand, you know, temporal, you know, energy and all this kind of nonsense that they push, which very clearly sounded like a lie, and seemingly was, because before uh, that can ever be clarified whether it's true or not, Minutemen bust into the room, Sylvia is surrounded, and seeing no other choice, she pokes herself with... Um, with the stick, the pruning stick, I guess we're going to call it. Now, it still doesn't have a name, this TVA baton, or whatever it is. But now she's been pruned as well, and seemingly going to end up in the void. And back in the void, um, I want to say, first of all, Loki just is like, what is this? St he starts shouting, and he has a, has a meltdown like a toddler. And he's like, what I love is like, his, the best moment of the episode for me is Alligator Loki. There were so many cool things about this that were so entertaining. But the moment where he just says something along the lines of like, there's an alligator, that's a Loki, and I'm not even surprised. And his just his reaction in general to alligator Loki was hilarious here. <laughs> I really loved it. You're telling me that thing's a Loki too? Oh, yes. Okay. And basically, yeah, all they do is survive in this world. Uh, and this world, as it turns out, is the kingdom of Kid Loki. And... You know, Loki seems a bit hesitant, and he's like, oh, well, what was your nexus event, your highness? And he says, I killed Thor. And that's it. So it's like, oh, damn, we're, we're getting kind of dark. Uh, after that, we see that the, these variants are all drinking wine. That's right, even the alligator Loki is drinking wine. Best moment in the MCU. <laughs> they're getting an alligator drunk. That may or may not be a Loki. They're kind of, they kind of hit later on. They're like, I actually, I don't know, actually. So, boastful Loki, who we saw last week, had a... Uh, you know, this is a character we didn't get a lot of. He was kind of the lesser of all these variants. We we saw him holding some version of Mjolnir last week. Uh, and basically when he goes into a story, he's like, Oh, I vanquished Captain America and Iron Man. And I got all the Infinity Stones. And the alligator's like, you're full of shit. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, that we don't really get any more on him. Uh, or even whether or not any of that was true. Or how he ended up with Mjolnir. Uh, I guess those are questions that are just more interesting uh, left unanswered. Uh, but we do find out the nexus event of the alligator Loki was that he ate the wrong neighbor's cat. So, like, again, I I just want to know what that alligator's Loki was. Like, give me, like, you know those Marvel one-shots? Give me one of those on alligator Loki. I just want to see that. I want to see what his life was like. Was he just... Does that mean it was there an alligator Thor? I don't know. But um, there was a frog Thor we will get to. I'll talk. There's a lot of Easter eggs in this episode that we'll get to uh, at, towards the end that were very interesting. Uh, old Loki, I mean, the obvious question is that all these Lokis presumably had the same endpoint of meeting Thanos. So why is there, how is there an old Loki? And the question he answers that is he said he cast a, a projection so realistic that Thanos thought he snapped his neck and then this old Loki sort of drifted through space. Uh, you know, like that episode of Futurama where Ben is just drifting through space, thinking of his life. And eventually, old Loki kind of, you know, thinks to himself and kind of feels, you know, uh, thinks of his place in the universe, as it were, and then ends up on a remote planet and waits there for a long time. Um... And uh, that's why he's old, obviously. But he also gets lonely, and when he tries to leave the planet, he says he actually misses Thor. Uh, and when he tries to leave the planet, the TVA catches him. Uh, so yeah, you know, interesting. Uh, I think the old Loki character is interesting uh, in that we didn't really get an explanation for his his costume or any of that stuff. I guess, you know, if Loki had lived, he would have gone back to a, a costume uh, like that, which is weird. Uh, is where he basically went backwards as he got older. He went to a <laughs> the costume. That was in the early days of the comics, but either way, uh, it's pretty interesting. But yeah, he's basically kind of a almost like a jaded Loki as well. Um, he he's you know refers to all these Lokis as the god of outcasts, uh, which is you know interesting uh, that he would call that instead of the god of mischief. He's basically kind of after all this reflection realizes what being a Loki really means. It doesn't mean that you're the king of mischief and you're having fun or right? and you're above everyone. It basically just means that you're an outcast. And of course, this is all leading into our Loki connecting with Sylvie, uh, which is uh, something that we get a bit more of, as Sylvie has now woken up um, in the void, very close to Eliath, by the way, uh, and the car speeds towards her, 
while she's kind of chasing the smoke. She tries enchanting Eliath, and it sort of buys her a bit of time, seemingly, but doesn't work altogether. And in this car, this weird pizza delivery car, which is like a really old car, it had like a, a weird like pizza on <laughs> on a spring on the top. It, 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 I was I don't know, it kind of reminded me of like the car in Pixar movies. Um, you know, it could have been Lightning McQueen because there's Owen Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Owen Wilson as Mobius has survived and picks up Sylvie and they escape uh, the smoke monster as it were. Now, Loki has basically said his plan to the other Lokis is that we're going to kill Eliath. And uh, he's like, who's with me? And they all just laugh at him. <laughs> what I love is that all the Lokis are all consistent and it's kind of being a bit of a dick. Uh, and he leaves and he's climbing out of the hatch because they're in an underground bunker. And while there, President Loki, who we made a big deal of in the trailers, not a big deal in the show at all, um, is surrounding surrounds him with his army and that's where we kind of leave that very briefly but when we get back to the bunker uh, the Lokis are basically confronted by you know this variant Loki and the presidential Loki and he's like oh you bastard you let him to us so obviously we're trying to hide from him but then as it turns out double cross both the Loki is like goes up to the uh, the highness his kid Loki uh, and is like, ha, now I'll be king. I told them where we are. Ha, ha, ha. And then Presidential Loki is like, well, actually, I have an army and I'm going to take over this kingdom. Ha, ha, ha. And then his army is like, ha, ha, ha. Well, actually, we're going to take over because we're an army. Ha, ha, ha. That's the most Loki thing ever. Loki just keeps double-crossing different versions of Loki. And that was what the... Like, I think you could probably... Definitely, and I will talk about it later, make the argument that all these variant Lokis were altogether kind of pointless. They were fun. They served their purpose, I guess. Uh, but at least it's fun that they're all consistent in them being Lokis, double-crossing each other, being kind of alcoholic miscreants. Uh, it's all part of the fun uh, of this show, I think. Uh, and this, as this is all happening, a kind of brawl breaks out, which was a bit of fun. It was nice seeing all the different Lokis kind of fight, even though it was very brief, uh, and I would have actually preferred a bit more focus on that. But, uh, you know, in his infinite wisdom and old age, old man Loki casts an illusion so that it looks like alligator Loki, our, our Loki, I'm just going to call him our Loki, that's the original, the OG Loki. <laughs> Kid Loki and the Alligator Loki are fighting so that they can slip away as all this mayhem is going on. So, as mentioned, um, Loki's plan was to attack Eliath. Uh, now, his plan here is that as something bigger comes into the void, which we see uh, the USS, uh, what was it called? Uh, da, da, da. the USS Enterprise was it? No, the USS Enterprise is thing of Star Trek. The USS Eldridge. There we go. Sorry, um, comes through. He's like, well, when he's occupied eating something big, we can attack him because he'll be more focused on the big meal. And they like the the ship gets destroyed in like fifteen seconds. <laughs> so he's like, oh, so much for that plan. And that's another Easter egg that I will get to. The USS Eldridge has a its own history, which is rather interesting. And as this is all kind of happening. Uh, Sylvie and Mobius find the other Lokis and they give the most succinct explanation which I probably should have just used this from the start instead of trying to explain each different Loki he's like okay just so you know Sylvie okay that one's us as a child that's us from the future and that's uh, that's us as an alligator and she's like cool no worries <laughs> so that's all it takes now Sylvie has her own plan it's not to destroy uh, Eliath in fact she finds that plan as laughable as the other Lokis did and she basically says like essentially we know that there's something beyond this, someone controlling this, someone who put the, the timekeepers up to all this, who made them androids, who's who's pulling the strings, as it were. She's like, Eliath is a guard dog, but who's he guarding? So if we can get rid of Eliath, and that's what I intend to do by enchanting it, we can get by, and we can see who's behind this whole thing. And Loki's like, okay. that Like, originally, he's kind of like, How, how's that going to work? And then he's like, okay, actually, maybe that works. <laughs> um, but we do go back to the TVA, speaking of, and Ravona has B-15 locked away. Of course, B-15 last week, I said that her her fate was kind of left up in the air. We didn't see her die, but presumably she was alive because of that reason. She's now locked up in Ravona Renslayer's office, and she starts sort of interrogating her very loosely. She's like, you know, um, B-15 is like, the people need to know the truth, that you're lying to them and all this. And, and Ravona says, like, the TVA doesn't need that. TVA needs stability. Without this stability, you know, this whole kind of thing is going to come down. Uh, and that'll be worse for time in the world in general. Uh, B-15 says that she knows that Sylvie is going to go after whoever did this, whoever created the TVA, whoever created the timekeepers. That's her goal. And Ravona's sort of like, oh, well, I want to know as well. But she's like, yeah, well, 
she needs to know you want to know basically uh so that you're probably going to fail she's going to get there before you and again we don't know how 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 truthful Ravona is being in her motives or her her logic but as soon as she leaves she asks miss minutes this time to seemingly legitimately pull up the files on the creation of the tva and uh, the origins of the tva so that's i think that's actually yeah that's the end of of our tva uh, storyline for now so where that will end uh end up who knows um i think we, we have a, we should probably all have an idea of where it's going at the end of the episode but as for what ravona Renslayer's role in all this is going to be it still kind of remains to be seen but of course we have the finale to wrap that all up so loki and sylvie uh meanwhile uh, and the rest of the lokis are kind of just chilling uh figuring out and waiting for their plan of attack uh i do want to mention one of my favorite bits in the episode again it rolls around alligator loki Mobius and old ma old man Loki, I guess, just talking about the alligator Loki as if he's not even there. He's like, I don't ever remember taking in an alligator. And they're like, he mightn't even be a variant Loki. He's like, he's green. Well, I'm like, well, he could be lying. Well, and he's like, oh, but that would make him more like Loki. Perfect. Uh, again, old Loki was great. Alligator Loki was amazing. Mobius is always a highlight. So that was like amazing. <laughs> that made the whole episode work well. Uh, but of course, uh, the awkward romance between Sylvie and Loki or Loki and himself I guess uh, is still sort of going on and uh, they're still really awkward around each other they, they don't really want to acknowledge their feelings they, they're insisting that the Nexus event uh, that saved them last week which uh, as we learned from Mobius was that Loki fell for himself uh, that wasn't the case that was a, that was a TVA line we didn't fall for ourselves you know we don't love each other even though Loki is you know putting uh, the blanket around her as well in a very kind of affectionate way. Um, now, the other thing is, as I saw someone point this out, they're frost giants, <laughs> so they probably don't feel the cold. So that's Loki being extra smooth to get Sylvie under the blanket. And, uh, yeah, that's sort of um, strange. They kind of ask about what the what the plan is after all this. What, what happens after the TVA is gone? What are you going to do? And Loki's like, oh, maybe I'll find a timeline to rule. And they're like, oh, how ver you know, how very Loki-ish. But Sylvie's like, I don't, I don't really know, because obviously this has been kind of her defining purpose throughout the, the whole show, and her throughout her whole life, seemingly. And uh, Loki says very sweetly to her, look, we'll, we'll figure it out together. So, again, who knows what that relationship is going to be <laughs> at the end of this show. Um, of course, fans might want them to get together, but is that sustainable throughout the whole MCU? Who knows? What is Loki's place in the MCU in general after this? We, we still kind of have to figure that out. Uh, you know, we could even get more, uh, more of Loki as a TV series, but we'll have to see. Uh, as they kind of get ready to do their plan, uh, the other uh, Lokis escort them to uh, quite near Eliath. Kid Loki gives him a sword, a golden sword, which is cool. Um, as It's even cooler later on because we can see he, he lights it on fire. But the other thing is, like, could, Loki probably could have just conjured up that sword, but sure, we won't. Look, it was a nice moment. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's... Kid Loki is another question mark that we'll come to in a sec um, that I might want to talk about. So, basically... They're ready to go. The variants of Loki are going to stay in the void, as that's their home. Those variants now being, you know, Alligator Loki, Old Loki, and Kid Loki. Mobius goes back to the TVA with his tempad with the intention of burning it to the ground. And he says to Loki, thank you for, you know, giving me that spark. You know, because he's kind of the whole thing that brought the TVA to their knees and caused them to question all this stuff. Um, and they kind of have a nice hug and a, a, a rather tender moment, which is good because, you know, Loki has always been kind of an outcast. And see him have friends throughout this is... Is kind of interesting and nice to see. Uh, so I guess, you know, the TVA storyline next week is going to be Ravona versus Mobius. And we'll see how that pays out. Hoping for a jet ski. And that leaves Sylvie and Loki ready to face Eliath. And hopefully, what lies beyond him. So, Sylvie sort of um, attempts to enchant Eliath. And uh, it's yeah, not working <laughs> all that well. Uh, but the idea is that basically, like... If Eliath comes at her while he's trying to be enchanted, Loki will distract Eliath. So he runs away with the sword, starts swinging a flaming sword, which is a hell of a distraction, but doesn't fully work. So we're like, oh man, it's going, it's all gone, uh, it's all gone tits up here. What's going to happen next? So what happens, very simply, is looks like all is lost. Like Sylvie is about to be Ethan. Ethan? Sylvie is about to be Ethan. Ethan isn't an other variant. <laughs> I misspoke. Uh, she's about to be Ethan. And then all of a sudden, there's another, some other sort of illusion over there. What is that? Surely Sylvie isn't able to do that. That's too impressive. And wouldn't you know it, 
it's all Loki. Richard E. Grant is literally creating Asgard as an illusion. Insanely so. His magic is like all over the place. Um, just creating this massive illusion. And that's a hell of a distraction because the light goes right over and starts trying to chomp down on Asgard. And, you know, as you would imagine, it works as a pretty good distraction. But, as we should have expected, it leads to him having to sacrifice himself. So, oh, Loki, that's a picture up on Richard E. Grant, gets eaten by Elioth. It's a shame. He was fun. And I think he gave a great performance. He had... What I liked about the performance of old Loki was he had that kind of, and again, because it was like a classic looking version of the character, he had that kind of Shakespearean sort of gravitas to his performance, which is what Loki sort of started with and probably should have more of uh, if we're going by the comics, but I'm glad they managed to do it off here at least. Uh, but yeah, he is, he is eaten, and it looks like even though he has sacrificed himself, it might be in vain as Elioth makes his way towards Sylvie and Loki, and Sylvie tells Loki, I need your help to enchant him, and Loki's like, I've never done that, and he's like, you can do it, because we're the same. And while it looks like it's not going to work, just as Elioth is opening his jaws, he is enchanted. And then, what would happen, but they kind of move aside, and they see a castle in the clouds. And in there, presumably, is whoever is behind all the TV stuff. Probably Kang? <laughs> we're all assuming it's Kang? I hope this isn't a Mephisto situation. Where it's something I got that's a bit of a letdown. I mean, this is kind of what's tough about this because if it is Kang, are they really going to do the big reveal of Kang now in the TV show in the finale and not in the main MCU films? Maybe not, you know. Uh, and then you leave yourself with a rather unsatisfying finale if it's just like, oh, Kang, we just missed him, you know. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes, but that is. Uh, how the episode ends and as I said good episode is it a great episode probably not there is no credit scene this week uh, I mean you could probably make an argument that the variants had very little impact on the actual plot of the episode uh, that's what I had written down before until old Loki made that sacrifice um, but aside you know aside from that I think it was fun the episode kind of feels a bit like a distraction again sort of um, but presumably that's going to be rectified next week when it does lead to something. It, it is kind of a strange episode to have as a, a penultimate episode because there wasn't a lot of drama in this. It was sort of a fun... I don't want to call it a like diversion because it, it is going to tie in with the main plot. And it did with, you know, the reveal that whoever is running Timekeepers is here. But yeah, I don't know. It, it felt like the episode at times was a little bit aimless. Uh, a bit unstructured. But enjoyable. Uh, I kind of like the MCU when it goes, swings and goes a bit mad. And having, you know, all these weird versions of Loki is an example of that. Uh, so I found it fun. As for Easter eggs, okay? This episode, since it was the end of time, the time is all over the place. And there's just some really cool, weird variant stuff in this. I want to talk about the Marvel Easter eggs first. One of them, okay, as we're going under the bunker uh, where the Loki variants are hiding... We see Mjolnir on the ground, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I saw something in the glass jar, and I was like, is that Thor? I thought it was Thor. And it was Thor. But not the Thor we know. That was Throg. Frog Thor. I talked about Frog Thor last week. I was hoping we'd get a cameo. Okay, it was never going to be a massive thing, uh, I don't think. I don't know if, if you can really build up. Like, it, 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 it asked so many questions, <laughs> if you were to introduce them properly. But, uh, yeah, he's Frog Thor. Uh, we got a little glimpse of him. So that's that. That's enough. For me, I was wondering. It looked kind of like the way, like, you know, in the first Avengers, when Frog Thor is jumping into the, between, out of the glass trying to break when Loki drops him out of the sky. I was wondering if, like, that's what happened in this world. Like, he was in the glass and he never broke out and that was his Nexus event. I don't know. Interesting to think about, though. Uh, and you do kind of have to think about all those Nexus events in all these cases, which is a lot of fun as well. Uh, the other one we had... I can't believe they put this in there. I'm so I'm so appreciative of them doing things like this. There's a famous thing that was a joke for a long time uh, on the internet was that Thanos has a helicopter. And it was like the Thanos copter. It was a joke. And in the background, Thanos copter. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. Uh, that's pretty entertaining. Again, you have to kind of ask yourself the question of like, oh, so that means like alternate version of Thanos didn't survive here, but all these Lokis could. You know, again, I'm sure someone out there some comic fan is probably really kind of livid about that. I kind of think it's okay. 
I don't really care. It's entertaining, and you know I'm okay with Loki being mischievous enough to have survived so far and bonding with other Lokis. The other thing uh, that we have, uh, I didn't see this. I heard someone mention it. I'm going to have to go back to the episode now and see if I can find it. But they say that the Avengers Tower apparently has a Quang logo, and that logo uh, is the CEO. Uh, is a co sorry, is a company, and the CEO of that. I'm trying to remember his name. It's not. In, it's in my head somewhere. Uh, is uh, an alias or an alternate version of Nathaniel Richards. Nathaniel Richards is Kang. So again, hinting that Kang could be behind all this. Everyone's assuming he is. I hope we're right. I hope this is more of an Agatha Harkness as opposed to a Mephisto situation where it actually we are right. <laughs> because if not, people are probably going to be annoyed again. There is also some cool other Easter eggs. And this is not MCU stuff. This is just kind of pop culture-y stuff and you know we're the pop culture pod so a lot of pop culture stuff goes through our head i'm going to talk about the uss eldridge first um because that was uh, one i said i would talk about the uss eldridge uh i was like that why do i know that name and it's because of there's a, a famous kind of myth hoax called the philadelphia experiment where it was alleged that the uss eldridge was rendered invisible to enemies <laughs> which is of course ridiculous um or is it um, but yeah, total nonsense. Um, and I was like, that's cool because they, tie, you know, they did things with like DB Cooper. They kind of tie in a lot of those kind of cool myths and legends. At first I was thinking, was it like something from the Bermuda Triangle? Who knows? But you also kind of then have to ask about the Nexus event here. So I'm like, is the Nexus event that they actually turned invisible? And then the TV was like, no, no, we can't be having that. <laughs> or was it that, that Nexus event uh, you know, after they reset timeline, made people think like, what the hell just happened? Oh my god, maybe it did go invisible. Uh, you know, kind of a glitch in the Matrix situation, I suppose. But there are other two kind of cool ones. Um, behind Richard E. Grant's old Loki at one point, we have a, a video game cabinet. And if, you know, if you just saw that in passing, you're like, oh yeah, video game cabinet, why not? The game behind him is Polybius. Polybius is a myth, mythical uh, arcade cabinet that again, and they dive into kind of cool, interesting conspiracy theories here, um, was a cabinet that people said existed that was basically used by the CIA, was it, I think it was, like, I've heard different versions of this. One people said it was to brainwash people and get data, but also to hire people, um, you know, for the military, uh, if their results were good enough, but, uh, and some people say it caused deaths and all sorts of stuff, because again, you know, it's a, it's probably nonsense, but uh, they, they have an arcade cabinet here, uh, in the void so that's interesting uh what's the history of that who knows but it is pretty cool uh the other one uh speaking of cool ecto cooler with an outrageous food taste and what are we gonna call it ecto cooler um this is something that people kind of love high c ecto cooler this was something that uh kid loki is drinking that was brought out as a promotional tie-in for extreme ghostbusters and it comes back every now and then people have a sort of affinity for it they have a love for it He's drinking it here. So that's the second uh, second extinct drink that we've had in the Loki TV series. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Kid Loki seems to have a taste for it. I see ecto <laughs> And that's, uh, that's the penultimate episode of Loki. I kind of, I am surprised <laughs> that we're going to wrap up uh, our discussion of this episode talking about ecto cooler. I, you know what? Here we go. We'll do a bit of overtime. Um, Kid Loki. And Alligator Loki are now the only variant Lokis left in this world. We talked about Kid Loki could be, uh, you know, uh, a lead into Young Avengers. We have a lot of characters in these Disney shows that have hinted at Young Avengers. Is it, Presumably, he's still alive. You know, he could have got out if Mobius had wanted him to. Um, or if he wanted to, Mobius kind of gave him the option. So, Kid Loki, very possible he could come back to the main MCU. In theory. Uh, and you know, now that old Loki is gone and it's just him and Alligator Loki. Maybe. You could actually do that. I think he's probably so far maybe one of the best candidates uh, to actually make the jump uh, and form the Young Avengers. Because you know, we had Patriot in Falcon and the Soldier who was nowhere near ready basically uh, to be a hero. We had uh, Wicked and Speed who are, you know, not, <laughs> not real, not existent at the moment. So... You know, uh, as far as the candidates go, he might be one of the better options. Uh, I mean, Alligator Loki, you could form the Pet Avengers. Why not? <laughs> Either way, that was episode five of Loki. And of course, next week we'll have the finale. We will talk about the show as a whole, what we thought of the finale, and what it could mean for the MCU 
all together. Uh, is there something I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the episode as well. Do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? I'd like to know. Uh, other than that, please give this video a like and please subscribe because, of course, finale discussion next week. But before the weekend, we're also going to have our Black Widow review. So please come back because, remember, I'll be watching. Take care.